There are thousands of different types of butterflies and many of them are in decline. In this video, we're going to talk about how to attract butterflies to your garden and how you can help butterflies survive and thrive. In order to attract butterflies to your yard, it's important to know a little bit about the life cycle of a butterfly. A butterfly will lay eggs on what's called a host plant, and that host plant will then help the caterpillar survive. So the caterpillar will emerge out of the egg, and then it will eat the host plant in order to grow larger. It will then form a chrysalis or a pupa, and then when it's fully formed, it will emerge as a winged adult from that chrysalis and then fly around your garden. So what do butterflies need to thrive? Well, they need a sunny spot. They need a host plant, as we talked about for the caterpillar. They need puddles. They need protection from the wind. And they need nectar. Butterflies prefer a sunny location. So plant your plants in a sunny location. They need sun for several reasons. One, in order to fly, they need to be warm. So they're gonna to wanna to bask in the sun. And if you can provide a rock for them to bask on or an evergreen, they like to bask on evergreens as well. Also, if your host plants are in a sunny location, the eggs and the caterpillars will develop faster. So the other thing that butterfly needs is it needs a host plant. And a host plant is the plant where it's going to lay its eggs either on or near this plant to provide food for the caterpillar. So in this case right here, we have milkweed, um, narrow leaf milkweed, Asclepias fascicularis, and this is the host plant for the monarch butterfly. So the butterfly will come lay eggs on here, the eggs will hatch into larva, and the little caterpillars will actually eat this plant. So sometimes that's upsetting to people. They put a plant in their yard and then the caterpillars came and ate it all. <laughs> but that's the purpose of the host plant is to provide food for the caterpillars. When the butterfly is a winged adult, it feeds on nectar. This is like sipping a sugary substance out of the flower. And they have a proboscis, which is like their tongue. It's a straw-like projection that sips the nectar out. Nectar is rich in sugar and gives them energy. Uh, some plants have more nectar than others. In fact, native plants attract three times more butterflies than non-native plants. And some flowers that tend to have double or triple petals have less nectar in them. So you want to plant a variety of plants that are blooming in order to support the food that the butterflies need. Butterflies also do something called puddling. They go near a damp piece of ground and they, they do get some moisture from that, but they also get salts, nitrogen, and amino acids. So if you can provide a space like what we have here, we have a pot that's filled with small gravel and it's just wet. It's not, it's not deep, um, it's very shallow, and the butterflies will land on this and pick up the nutrients they need. Again, this is called puddling, and you can easily provide this in your garden to help the butterflies. Butterflies prefer protection from the wind. If it's too windy, their bodies can cool off and then it's harder for them to fly. Also, as you can imagine, butterflies are light and fluffy and the wind will push them away. So try to find a spot in your garden that's protected from the wind. A few other tips for gardening for butterflies is plant plants of varying heights. Some butterflies will like lower plants, some butterflies will like taller plants, and that could provide some protection from predators. Another concept is to plant a block of plants in like a three to four foot patch. That way, as the butterfly is going from flower to flower, it's visiting the same kind of flower in that patch. Sometimes the patch is one plant because the plant, like a ceanothus or a buckwheat, is about a three foot footprint or sometimes it's four or five plants together, maybe some asters that then form a three to four foot patch. An additional tip is to have flowers always in bloom in your yard, something in bloom. We call that overlapping bloom times. 
many times there are butterflies in our garden in the late fall and the early winter and there's not a lot in bloom. So one of the things you can do to really help the butterflies is find things that bloom in your area at those unusual times of the year when there isn't a lot in bloom. For example, manzanita in my yard blooms in January, providing some nectar for those wayward butterflies. And remember, butterflies and caterpillars are insects, so using insecticides can damage them. If you're having trouble with any pests in your garden, the master gardeners are here to answer questions and make suggestions for non-toxic management of pests in your garden. So see that information in the description box below. We'll also put a list of some suggested native and non-native plants that attract butterflies. So happy gardening.